I'm going to talk about saturated fat. Researchers followed those with clogged carotid arteries, the neck arteries. Patients with a clogged artery supply were four to 15 times more likely to have cognitive deterioration. We don't want cognitive deterioration. So we don't want clogged carotid arteries. Now, it was interesting because in one of these two studies, what the researchers did is they were putting stents in because of the clogged carotid arteries. So they tested the people before and after they put the stents in. The increased blood supply to the brain increased and improved memory 7%. And that's only this much of a blood supply. I, I mean, our, our blood vessels could literally circle the earth. They're that long. They only fixed this much, and they got a 7% boost in memory. Imagine if you do it the natural way and melt away all the plaque, which may take up to two years, then you're going to have some real boost in memory. And that's what I would like to see. Here's a couple more studies. In this one, those with carotid clogging, they looked at severe Alzheimer's disease. And they were two to five times more likely to have severe Alzheimer's disease. Now, how is that steak looking now? Little not so tasty? Cheese is probably one of the biggest culprits in raising saturated fat levels in the American diet, because it's used in fast food and all over the place, and because it has an addictive chemical in it, and people really don't want to stop eating it. That's beta casomorphin 7, in case you want to know what that chemical is. Another study showed that insufficient blood to the brain declined memory and learning. And also, this insufficiency of blood created more amyloid plaques, something we don't want. Now, you can see how blood vessels in the brain are really necessary. More atherosclerosis equals more memory problems. And as tiny strokes over and over eat up a memory here, the ability to navigate here. You know, Alzheimer's patients often have trouble finding their way home. And yes, electronic gizmos can help them and help you find people when they're wandering off. But better yet, let's reduce cardiovascular clogging so that people get better instead of worse, brighter instead of fuzzier. This was an interesting Finnish study. They looked at people in midlife. They measured their cholesterol. Then they followed them till they were older. And they found they had two to three more times the risk of Alzheimer's disease if they had high blood cholesterol at midlife. So there's little doubt that lowering blood cholesterol is helpful. How do we do that? Well, we eat less saturated fat. And in our study, we attempted to reduce saturated fat to 7% of calories. Well, this was the most difficult part of the entire study. We had a team of dietitians calling people and visiting people and trying to get them to eat less saturated fat. And it was very, very difficult. And I have to say, compliance was not perfect. However, the American Heart Association has since lowered the figure to 6% of calories as a maximum of saturated fat. I'll tell you, from analyzing diets, you really can't get down to 6% and still eat any animal products. There just isn't room. Because there's a little saturated fat in many, many different foods. And when you add all that saturated fat up, on a whole plant diet, you're likely to get something like 4 to 6% saturated fat, which is perfect. But then when you add some one meal of animal fat, it's too high. And then you're risking your brain. What are the highest saturated fat foods? Let's see, should we ignore the one on top because coconut oil is so popular these days? <laughs> Two tablespoons of coconut oil, 24 grams. I know there's a lot of confusion about when people say medium chain triglycerides, which is not an exact term at all, since triglycerides always have three fatty acids and none are medium. Uh, two fatty acids is a diglyceride, one fatty acid is a monoglyceride. But they're talking about the length of the fatty acids. There are three saturated fatty acids that are very well proven to clog our arteries. That's lauric acid, myristic acid, and palmitic acid, respectively 12, 14, and 16 carbons long. Otherwise identical. These three fatty acids make up 65% of coconut oil. So coconut oil is very clogging to the arteries. Also, any extracted oil is not a great idea. 
because when you extract an oil from a plant, say even if it's a sunflower seed with lots of vitamin E and fiber, you take out all the fiber and most of the vitamin E when you get sunflower seed oil. The oil is something like white sugar. You start with a beet and you get beet sugar. Well, you've left out a lot of good things. And you start with the sunflower seed and get sunflower oil, you've lost a lot of good things. Why not eat the sunflowers? Now, how do you do that? Well, one way is powdering them. Another way is to eat the nut butters or seed butters. Another way is to make, I, my wife has uh, cookbooks uh, called, she has a dementia prevention cookbook, and in it is her creamy walnut dressing, which is totally delicious, but contains a lot of the gamma form of vitamin E, also the essential fatty acid, alpha linolenic acid found in the walnuts, but made into a dressing so delicious that put on top of anything, you'll eat it. So that's a good way to get your uh, low saturated fat foods and make sure you want to eat them. Cheddar cheese is high in saturated fat. Two slices, those little tiny thin slices, 11 grams. How many grams do you get per day? 11 grams, that's it, on a 2,000 calorie diet. Maybe 13 grams if you eat a little bit more food. Uh, fast food cheeseburger, nine grams of saturated fat. Milk, yogurt, ice cream, all dairy products have saturated fat. And people, I mean, maybe ice cream, one cup has five grams. How many people eat one cup of ice cream? <laughs> so you, it adds up. What about low saturated fat foods? Vegetable curry, two grams, not a problem. Tofu, a whole cup, one gram. Soy milk, pinto beans, Swiss chard, very low in saturated fat, practically nothing. So in other words, you can eat these all you want. This is a graph from my uh, Diet Doctor software. Actually, it's 292,060 food choices in the, the 2020 version. This is the paleo diet that I analyzed, and the top left is calcium. And the calcium should be here, but it's way down there. Very little calcium in that diet. In fact, studies have noted that when you get to a diet that's so reliant on fat and animal protein, there's very little calcium, either in animal fat or plant fat, or animal protein. So it's inevitable that you're getting much too little calcium to support bone health. And the studies are showing that people on paleo diets are getting osteoporosis at an earlier age and that it is progressing quicker. And on the bulletproof diet, even more so. Analyzing the diet's the real key to knowing what's in them. These are the foods that you can eat all you want of without risking your arterial health, your brain health, heart attacks, or strokes. Of course, heart attacks and strokes, each of which I've written a book on, also depend upon you building a plaque in your arteries first before you can have the heart attack or the stroke. So why not tone down our arterial plaque with a low saturated fat that looks delicious? I'm going to talk just for a couple of slides about oxidized cholesterol, known as oxysterols. Those sharp little crystals up there are what happen when you have too much cholesterol in your blood and it crystallizes and is oxidized. Now, we know that cholesterol itself only contributes to the cholesterol, and dietary cholesterol only contributes to blood cholesterol a little bit, perhaps 10% to 15% of blood cholesterol levels are due to dietary cholesterol. However, when you cook an egg, which is very high in cholesterol, then you get oxidized cholesterol. This oxidized cholesterol, it goes into your digestion, is built into chylomicrons, which are fat transporters for dietary fat, much like LDL or fat transporters for liver fat. These chylomicrons circulate the oxidized cholesterol throughout your body, 45 times more oxysterols in arterial plaque than in a healthy artery. And the problem is that they can cause, with those sharp crystals, the plaque that sits there year after year. People are 40 years old with clogged arteries, 50 years old with clogged arteries, then they have a shrimp omelet. Shrimp is very high in cholesterol, so is the eggs. Then they may coalesce into cholesterol crystals, oxidize cholesterol, and break the plaque free. And that is where you get either, if it's very tiny in the brain, vascular dementia, if it's larger in the brain, you get a stroke, which can be devastating. Or in the heart, you could get a heart attack. It's probably a good idea not to eat oxidized cholesterol. 
They're powerful neurotoxins, and they increase brain inflammation and oxidation. They increase beta amyloids in Alzheimer's disease. In Parkinson's disease, we have Lewy body dementia sometimes, and Lewy body dementia is also very sad. Um, we have worked with people with Lewy body dementia as well, and these techniques are also very effective with Lewy body dementia. Uh, one man uh, came in the clinic, and with Parkinson's disease, sometimes people are getting too thin. So she was feeding him bacon and eggs for breakfast to bulk him up. Well, we got her to switch over to uh, actually oatmeal with avocado. Sounds funny, but he loved it. And when they came back a month later, we said, how did it go? He said, well, we only changed breakfast. Did you notice any difference? Well, his Lewy body dementia is about 25% better. One meal, one month. What if he did all three? You can do that. I hope he's doing that now, too. So where we get oxidized cholesterol is if we're eating too much saturated fat and our blood cholesterol is raised, that cholesterol will oxidize. It then can enter. Now, cholesterol can't enter the brain, but oxidized cholesterol can. When it enters, it creates a wave of inflammation and damage to the brain. This is really not a good idea. So cooked animal foods have the oxidized cholesterol already. In our bodies, the oxidative breakdown of cholesterol creates these oxysterols that are so damaging. So basically, we don't want to eat cooked cholesterol. Actually, cholesterol is not required for human beings at all. Do you know how many molecules of cholesterol we make in our bodies? 70 quadrillion per second. That's a lot. If you want to know how much we get in 24 hours, you're going to need a calculator with a really big screen. 